what Muslims have done um, is put the Prophet Muhammad on a pedestal. Okay, they have glorified somebody who was always meant to be seen as a fallible human being, even if he was a messenger of God. So the point simply is this: that um, Muhammad was a fallible human being, and in refusing to draw pictures of him, two things I want to say. One is that you know Muslims have inadvertently uh, begun to treat him as a god, which is exactly the opposite of what Islam was meant to be. And number two, it is Sunni Muslims, not Shia Muslims. Shia Muslims continue to this day to have depictions of the Prophet. It was, uh, uh, it, it is Sunni Muslims, 90% of the Muslim world, who have decided, with again, obviously a very small elite having decided for everybody else, that this is off limits, that uh, depicting the Prophet is off limits. Now again, talk about imperialism. Talk about imposing upon you know, the Muslim world this, suppose, this rule that first of all was made by human beings, okay, not by God, and secondly, um, is now imposed even upon uh, non-Sunni Muslims. So basically what you're saying that is, uh, is that non-Muslims are allowed and should be allowed to draw pictures and publish them? Muslims are allowed as well as non-Muslims. Okay, that's your answer. Anybody is allowed. Do it. Green light. Do it. Now, I just, again, nothing is ever, you know, simple to just, enough to just say, just do it and let's get on with, you know, the next question. Motively, motivation matters, right? If what you're doing, and, and this comes back to your concern, Nima, that you know, I'm not really comfortable, and I know that you're playing infidel's advocate with me, but uh, devil's advocate, but if, uh, it, it, there are lots of people who, who fear that, again, you know, they're offending by doing this. If your motivation is to offend by uh, uh, cartooning and caricaturing the prophet, eh, fine, I mean, do it, but really, what are you achieving? I mean, how, how constructive is that? I mean, it's still your freedom, but how constructive? If, on the other hand, your point is to start a conversation, a civil conversation, about exactly, you know, these freedoms, and, and why Islam is compatible with these freedoms, by saying to people, you're not allowed, by saying to non-Muslims and Muslims, you're not allowed, this is off limits, this is taboo, don't go there, don't touch this. Actually, what these Muslims do is they wind up raising suspicions about what is it that these people have to hide? What is so threatening to them? What are they afraid of? Why are they so fragile? And that, frankly, is what plants the seeds of hatred and disgust, you know, towards Muslims. It seems in a, in a way when you are really against something and you're very <laughs> vocal uh, about it, it, somehow you manage to actually make that stronger. Exactly. Whereas when you're for something, you know, constructive, that's much better than being against something you empowered in a and, way, and you know how Nima just said for something constructive as opposed to against something welcome one more time if I may to the dynamics of identity of lazy identity I don't know all that I am but I know what I'm not okay this is what not just Muslims many others as well have fallen into but that includes Muslims and I will add moderate Muslims. There's very little that is moderate about Muslims who call themselves that, yeah. you know? And so please challenge that. Ask questions with civility to be sure. Uh, the religion Islam is uh, not only a faith question we said, also an idea of how to organize a society. How can you dis divide or can you divide faith from the political issue and when we speak of a political Islam, that's when we get problems. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have problems with people believing in this and that. Yeah. No. Now, uh, what do we do about it? Yeah. So well, what, what can we do about it? Again, it's one of those questions to which there is not a simple answer. If there was, it would have been done, right? Sure. But, um, uh, but I think you're absolutely right about uh, the need uh, to, um, uh, again, call out, identify where faith is being politicized. And, you know, my own interpretation that suffuses Allah, liberty, and love is 
all about making it a personal relationship with God, which again, Islam was meant to be, all right? And over the centuries, these traditions, so-called, have become, have calcified, have been allowed to calcify into traditionalism, which traditions can change, but traditionalism never can. Yeah, so, so I would argue that the approach, if you want to be effective and not just confrontational, I know it's very tempting to be confrontational, and believe me, I get that, I you know, was, was that s several years ago and have managed to work my way through. I think the approach, you still, you still get to piss people off. So it, you'll always be accused of being confrontational simply for speaking your truth. But, but to be uh, constructive, I think, is also to um, bring the faith element in and make that distinction for Muslims that there is a difference between faith and dogma. And once again, faith is secure enough to handle questions. Faith never needs to be threatened by questions. Dogma, on the other hand, always threatened by questions because dogma, by definition, is rigid and brittle and therefore deserves to be threatened by questions. Okay, next question. The, the way you're, you're looking for truth and you're you're, you're looking for it inside yourself and you're trying in a very honest way to uh, understand how you can call yourself a Muslim or if you can. And I'm thinking, you know, when you, when you peel away all the things that belong to a culture, to a tradition, to a religion, and you stay with what you have as far as I've heard so far, how can you say, or why do you say, I'm a Muslim? Why don't you just say, I believe in something higher than ourselves? <laughs> what is Muslim about it? I mean, what is the difference? Let me, let, can, I, can I just ask you, and I will answer, but can I just ask you why it matters to you? Uh, and, that's, and you can take that as a challenge or you can take that as a sincere question. Yeah. Why does it matter to you personally? that I do call myself a Muslim. It matters to me mm -hmm. just out of curiosity. I see. Because I want to know what you see mm -hmm. as being a Muslim or yeah. as opposed to being a Christian or a Buddhist. So, so once again, I refuse to fall into the trap of narrow identity. Uh, you know, it's not a choice, a stark choice that either I'm Muslim or I'm Christian or I'm Jewish. I point out very early on in the new book, that Islam is derived directly, directly from Judaism and Christianity. Of course. Okay, of course, exactly, of course. And yet, we treat, we treat the word Muslim as if it must be utterly distinct from those other two monotheistic religions. No, it must not be. It doesn't have to be. The cornerstone beliefs of any Muslim Come, hold on a second, let me finish, okay? So, so my point is that my integrity as a Muslim is actually in the uh, hybridity, the pluralism that is Islam as I interpret it, which means, furthermore, I don't have to have something so distinct about being a Muslim that I can say, and I must say, this is what makes me different from a Christian or a Jew. Who cares what the labels are? It's what we do with those identities that matter, right? And, and so, you know, one point that I, for those Muslims in particular who are very agitated, that I refuse to have a supremacy complex about Islam, you know, I point out to them, again, that a core tradition within Islam that we have lost because of political reasons is ijtihad, Islam's own tradition, own tradition of critical thinking and creative reasoning. The beauty of ijtihad is that by exercising it, it compels us to constantly be adjusting and adapting our beliefs as Muslims to modern circumstances. Does that stop me from being a Muslim? Not at all means that I take something that I have seen as valuable within Islamic tradition and uh, invoke it to show that ultimately we don't have to draw these lines of segregation between Muslims, Christians, and Jews. To me, that's just a very pragmatic, practical, and for me, inspiring way of practicing Islam. Uh, the gentleman in blue, please. Uh, I would like to... Uh 
to connect to the question about identity. And uh, I know you hate the identity politics, and uh, I agree as well. I hate them. But everybody <laughs> does it. And, and, yes, you know, you're right. This is the way, and we have two choices ride the wave or try to stop it. Politicians, there are, again, you've heard this a million times, there are no um, friends with politicians. They're not going to stand by you when the going gets tough. They have purely short term interests purely short term, which is to be re-elected. Okay? So there's not much moral courage that can be expected from them, I'm sorry to say, but that is the case. I'm not interested in wasting my breath and my energy seeking the approval of these people. Okay? What I'm interested in doing is wasting my breath and energy uh, showing that there is a longer term humane future that is possible for Islam. And I don't need the politicians to do that. My my uh, my approach, if you will, is to uh, it, it's 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 had to evolve. You know, the trouble with Islam today was infused by raw anger. But when I finished that book, I didn't realize that there really is a community, not visible right now because of the fear. Okay, but there are many more people besides myself. That's why we can create a liberal Muslim empowerment network in Europe really are many more people besides myself who have these values as Muslims. My challenge and opportunity as somebody with a global platform is to help them come out of the shadows and amplify their voices so that you, even if you don't read about it in the New York Times or the Globe and Mail or Express In, or I think there's going to be an article about it there, but you know what I mean. Even if you're not reading about it in the daily newspapers, that doesn't mean it's not there and it doesn't mean it's not happening. Nice Muslims, pluralistic Muslims cannot compete with the sensationalism of a bombing and a beheading. Okay? We just can't. Nor should we have to. Um, those stories, the bombings and the beheadings, should be covered. They do deserve airtime. But I'm just asking you as an informed citizen <coughs> to recognize that just because you're pelted with this image doesn't mean that there, that's all there is to the reality. Forget even the theory. Who gives a shit about theory? The reality of what is going on within Islam. And if I may say, again, Allah, liberty, and love will show you how I know I'm not alone. The conversations that I've had with young Muslims around the world who have said to me, we're on this journey with you, Irshad, but now show us how. how not just why we should stick our necks out, show us how. How do I deal with the accusation that I will be dishonoring my family when I speak my truth to them? How do I cope with the backlash that I'll be getting from my elders just as you are getting from yours? How? The very fact that I'm being asked how and not why anymore is, for me, a huge step in the right direction. Okay? Um, there was a question. Uh, I'm getting old, sir, so I'm going to have to just remind me very briefly what your question was. Security. Security. Uh, so here's my bottom line, and, and you know, I joke about you being a Jewish mother. My mother is a Jewish mother in the sense that she's constantly uh, saying to me, you do know that I live with my heart in my throat every day. And she says this to me as if the th it's the first time she's ever said it, right? Um, but of course I hear it in every other conversation that we have. And what I consistently say to her is, Mom, I know. I." The only thing I fear in this world is the notion of you having to bury me before I have to bury you. But I can't let that stop me. I can't let what might happen stop me from doing what needs to be done because I refuse, refuse as a free human being to further empower the enemies of reason and humanity. I will not give that to them. Yes. I just want...